where the fun begins. Hello. We begin tonight's meeting of the council by calling the council to order. Hello to everyone and thank you for joining us. The council is a live Twitch talk show and podcast discussing Star Wars The Old Republic. I'm Elise and with me are my fellow council members, Magic Ace. Hola. Redna. Hola. <laughs> and Sakari. Arrivederci. Oh, I, knew <laughs> I, knew I thought I'd... <laughs> I'd break it tonight just because I could. But you could see Magic Case had this real worried look on her face. <laughs> that, in the parlance, we would call this set and whiff. <laughs> it's funny. Tonight, we're going to talk about um, charities that use um, their method of charitying uh, with gaming. They use gaming as their platform. As a to medium. Do charitable works. Mm. That was, yeah, well stated. So. I like that. Awesome. Very cool. <clears throat> and the cool thing is, um, after all that, you can find our love, live broadcasts everywhere <laughs> that our recorded episodes are found. <laughs> our podcasts are found on your YouTube channel, any app that does podcasts. You can also find us on our social media, which would be like, Twitch, Twitter, Facebook, it's all the Council of Sotor. We also have our own webpage, which is thecouncilsotor.com, and we also have Patreon, patreon.com slash thecouncilsotor, and we have some pretty epic people on there, and we give them bonus stuff that the rest of you don't get, because you're not that cool. <laughs> wow. Whew. I know, right? <laughs> hey, it, it works. I gotta, I gotta give them, like, you know, a bump up there because they are <laughs> patrons <laughs> i have to do something yes we definitely appreciate our patrons we want to make sure we throw that out there welcome to everybody those of you who are joining us in chat we appreciate you being here and also those of you i guess in retrospect that are listening to this in podcast form seeing it on youtube we appreciate all you guys um let's get into the icebreaker the icebreaker of course is a little question just to get the, the discussion started uh, just kind of dip our toe in the water of what we're going to be dealing with tonight tonight's icebreaker question is and by the way if you're in chat feel free to uh, offer your own um your own input to this we'd like to hear what you guys have to say uh the question if you could make a wish pop into existence any charity just immediately poof there it is what would your chosen cause be so i'm, I'm kind of asking i'm asking what people what is your you know what is your passion like if like a charitable passion. I'm trying to interpret here because I know I've got people that probably read that literally in some way and then like answer it in some very calculated mathematical way that I So <laughs> here we go. I think Sakari is scared of I, me. <laughs> <laughs> Well what's happening is as 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 we as I'm talking, somebody's rearranging the order of who's gonna answer this. <laughs> And I'm going, oh my goodness, here it comes. <laughs> so, so magic, since that's what the order now says, um, would you like to answer this question? Uh, to be perfectly honest, if I was doing a charity, it would be for like, I guess, middle school to high school kids who are underprivileged, kids who don't have things i mean i live in a very impoverished area like impoverished like it's, it's it's not pretty there's more people poor in my area than most people would think oh i forgot to put my phone on silent my bad <laughs> um my thing would be so that these kids would have clothes they would have food to take home a lot of them we have a backpack program where kids that don't have food they get food sent home from the school on the weekends so that they have one meal each day and two mm -hmm. snacks. And that's a really big deal in a lot of the surrounding areas where I live. Uh, south of St. Louis and around it is a pretty poor area. So my charity that I could just pop up and suddenly be helping is I would find a way to distribute stuff to kids like that who their parents are not able to or won't. I would be giving them stuff. I would be making sure that they could survive and not go through middle school and high school with nothing. That would be my deal. That's fantastic. Yeah. I love how, uh, you know, real life experience has definitely kind of uh, changed your heart on that. That's really cool. 
Okay, oh, yeah. who was next to Hitler? So it was me, right? Okay, so <laughs> let me just shoot myself. How about that? Um, so mine, I, I would think I would definitely probably aim mine towards children as well. Um, specifically abuse cases. Um, when I started my stream way back in the day, it was I, I tried to do some ch some charitable fundraising for a place called Casa down here. It's a it, kid. I forget what it is. Basically, I forget what the acronym stands for. It's, but it's a Spanish word for house. Yeah. Well, yeah. There you go. Yeah. But but um, if anybody can help me out, lady, maybe you know, lady Danies in chat. Um, but the idea with it is is that there are children that end up in foster care and they're in the court system. And what happens is that they get passed around a lot and and somebody realized along the way that there's really no good legal representation for those kids. And so what happens is that they, that the court, there are people that are trained to be representatives, but the court kind of, so what they do is they go hang out with the kid, kind of like a big, big brother, big sister kind of a thing. Um, really build up a relationship, take him out, you know, kind of, kind of take care of him, so that the kid really trusts this person and look, looks up to them. So there's a relational element to it too. But then that person is the one that shows up for them in court and actually represents the interests of the child, which I think is phenomenal. So um, that was a big thing for me. I wasn't able to get really much done. I realized that I think. Did they not have that? Just as standard, because in Ohio they have. It's, it's possible. All I know is that that's They're what it's called down here. Yeah, I mean, like it, yes. Yeah. In in Missouri, they have court appointed child advocates, but the problem is that they're not connected to the child. They basically just hang out for a little bit and see if the parents are being stupid or not, and whether or okay. not the kids should have better rights, and then they stay out of it. So, like, so it, it varies on states. Okay, so it's more of a CPS kind of a thing. I mean, I, I get that there is that that functional element to it, but what I like about CASA specifically is that they are they really push that 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 element of having a relationship with kid, and I think that that is very important. But yeah, which for me, it would be something that would help children that are definitely in abuse situations, especially like first response, get them out of that kind of a, kind of a best kind of a thing. I have a passion for that. So that would be my answer. Elise, what about you? So um, I would probably be sticking with the whole gaming um, kind of element, but um, I like there's a few developers out there um, and researchers that are looking into seniors. So cool. I would like to do a little bit more on that, um, maybe down that path. Um, seniors, especially when they start um, getting older and homebound or in homes or daycare programs, they um, lose a lot of socialization and then also kind of find motor and all that kind of stuff. So um, there are a few developers who actually have some programs where they have seniors play games. Cool. Um, various different kind of games, and I would love to see that kind of rolled out to maybe more, you know, uh, um, you know, senior living facilities, mm -hmm. maybe a chain or something kind of a little bit bigger would be nice instead of these kind of pockets. Um, another one too, I do really like is, um, I do know that there are some, um, studies that are going on with, um, treating PTSD and anxiety issues again, through playing various games. Depends That's on the game, one. I guess. Right. There's some games well, that probably actually, wouldn't be very good for that, but okay. No, actually, I've heard some uh, therapists using as a desensitization. They're using uh, first-person shooters really? wow. to, uh, yeah. with people with post-traumatic uh, PTSD. Yeah. So yeah, there was a modern warfare game that they used for that because it was extremely graphic and violent, and um, it was actually pretty close to realistic. And I know because my cousin has PTSD from his military experience, and he was in one of those programs, and he couldn't touch an Xbox for months after that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah, just I'm, so. I'm sure it's awful. It's like reliving it in some ways. I think you'd have to really kind of do it really slowly to kind of desensitize. It'd probably be a, a program to it, I suppose. Um, Elisa, yep. it, what you, it's one of the things that you mentioned really kind of struck, struck me, and that is like the loss of fine motor skills with some of the, the older gamers, for instance. I think that you like you're kind of sitting on the cusp between that and something able gamers would be able to to help mm -hmm. out with and you know I'm sure we'll talk about them some tonight as well but I think that's cool like just to kind of take it in a new direction I think is awesome. Well and actually it's something it reminds me I'm sure that Elise has at least read uh some of the articles but there was a recent development that there's a uh, group that's actually actively designing hardware so that people that do have difficulties even with just muscular control muscular Spy dystrophy like 
-hmm. Yeah, Mike, uh, is Microsoft, right? They're trying to get this adaptive controller that actually adjusts and compensates for the physical deterrence that they have just naturally within themselves so that they can still play mm -hmm. like someone, you know, a normally bodied person could. Um, I know that normal is the wrong word. Please don't judge me for that. But <laughs> I suspect we're going to be stumbling over this kind of stuff all night. Really, right. I think. But still, it's something that's really exciting because somebody that doesn't have the same opportunities that I do, mm. right, um, or you know, or other people do, can actually end up getting those opportunities because people are doing that kind of research. So I can totally see exactly that kind of crossover between the able-bodied and the elderly, mm -hmm. where you know, for whatever the cause, be it accident or genetic or age, um, you've lost the um, potential that your body might have to offer, but that doesn't mean that you have to lose the opportunity to be able to enjoy video games, Agreed. you know? Absolutely. And because that's the other thing too, is there's actually been a lot of studies, you know, with all the hate in the world right now, there's actually been a lot of studies regarding video games in particular, and the fact that certain types of video games and certain types of engagement within that gaming environment are actually incredibly good for mental acuity mm -hmm. and even for maintaining, you know, it helps to like fight off Alzheimer's. Right. Um, you know, and the, that coordination. Yeah, uh, exactly. Mm -hmm. Physical um, coordination, just generally, because it's mental to physical timing and everything. It's just um, there. There are some significant positives, and I definitely would agree that I think that it's just nice to focus on some of those positives and maybe even send some money in that direction. Absolutely, but uh, Redney, you have not answered the question. What would you, sir, do? Okay, so so like Elise, because um, I can't say that I can speak from a personal position on this front. But like Elise, I was trying to think of a tie into video games generally. And what is, particularly in the United States, the most popular video game genre? First person shooters. So I think that I would like to do a charitable live streaming organization kind of sponsored thing for Second Amendment rights. We all need our guns. <laughs> really? This is going to get political in a hurry. Oh, but hey, I, I asked the question. It just, it's just one. Okay. Um, Enjoying what you already have isn't political. Changing uh, it makes it political. Yeah. Okay, so let, let me make sure. But this is a really good juncture. Before we go too far down this, I, I do want to make sure I, I put it. I put a, a, a general disclaimer out there on tonight's episode. We don't want to make anybody upset. So, so number one thing is like, for instance, what Rena just said. What what you're passionate about. Maybe something someone's passionate about in the other direction. So that's one aspect of it. Another thing is like we're, I, I suspect tonight we're going to be fa falling all over the place trying to express things tactfully but failing. Um, so, you know, like, I, I, you know, so the heart. I, I, us at the council. We love to tactfully <laughs> fail. I am so thankful Pretty much. that Sakari is the one apologizing for my blunders. I'm, I'm not up. apologizing for anything. <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm just managing expectations here. The wrong things, and I understand that, so I really do appreciate you looking out for me. Man. <laughs> well, I mean, like, I'm, all, I'm also hedging for myself is what I'm trying yeah, to do. Yeah, I was about to say, because no matter what opinion you have, there's more than one person on the planet that has the exact opposite opinion right. of you. Some of those may or may not be our viewers. Well, we are not intending to offend you. Yes. We just also have opinions. Well, I mean, but well, there's more to it than that, right? We're, we are talking about... about um, using gaming as a medium for fundraising and helping out people that are less quote unquote privileged than we are in some ways, right? So, so there's language that we're gonna, I think, kind of trip up up on for one. Um, but but I, I guess I want to communicate that the heart of this episode is about helping people, all of us coming together, taking care of each other. That's the heart of this episode and, and, and kind of going, now we're going to unpack that, I'm sure, what that means and how that plays out. But I definitely want to throw that out there and say, like, just in, just in case if we accidentally offend someone, um, you know, we are sorry. <laughs> we, didn't, well, we didn't mean and to. And actually, so. uh, and along those lines, I'd also like to apologize in advance because realistically, and I just want to put it out there, um, Part of the reason I'm so eager to be a part of this discussion is because realistically, and we touched on it last week, but I would argue that the highlight of my year is actually participating in Extra Life, which is a charitable live streaming event for, you know, it's up to 24 hours to raise money for the Children's Miracle Network, which is arguably one of the finest uh, 
charitable organizations that you can contribute to simply because it really is about, I mean, nobody's going to get pissed off that you're helping to donate to children that are suffering. Right. right? Agreed. Um, and, and as an, ex but as an extension of that, I think more even than that is the fact that I think many people, even personally, like I feel sometimes that my video gaming and the amount of time I spend on it and the fact that I'm doing, you know, a, a vlog on it and, you know, like the, the engagement that I have with video games, which is for all intents and purposes, at least for me, a purely entertainment, uh, adventure, um, I, I sometimes feel guilty that I dedicate so much time to something that is just purely entertainment and isn't necessarily uh, engaging with my community and contributing uh, and, and making it better or safer for my child or, you know, like I, I might be too unplugged. And so I very much like the fact that I do get to be able to do something to help someone. Mm. And that is deeply meaningful. So while we may make some mistakes in the way that we communicate that, I feel like that is the one thing that if everybody could view through that, that lens, I know that all four of us are trying to discuss this from a perspective of compassion. You know, Absolutely. we actually genuinely do care. Um, and, and we like that there exists in our hobby the ability to uh, make someone else's life better. Totally. If I can throw in something on top of that, right now, it's kind of what what you just said triggers for me the, the whole notion of consumption versus giving back kind of a thing, right? Many, if you're just playing a game, you're you're consuming. You're consuming a product. Um, and there's nothing wrong with that. No judgment whatsoever. Hey, we all do it. It's great. Um, but, but the ability to turn around maybe, and I think this is kind of where content producing comes in and we've had discussions about this as well. Will you be able to turn in your consumption of a product and give back in some way in, in that entertains a community or, or, you know, engages other people in some way, pulls other people in. Um, we're talking as well tonight about using all of that that's set up also and then to benefit people that can't even play video games or who are struggling to play video games or whatever that the case may be. So, very cool. Um, anyone have anything else to say before we get into our straw poll? We did do a straw poll this week, believe it or not. It was very late. There is not, it's not huge on the, on the answers, but I think there's enough there to, for us to have a bit of a discussion about what we had. Yes, I would like to say Magic Baby says hi. She's here. <laughs> yes, indeed. Okay, Elise, would you like to take us into the poll options this week? I will send them to chat. So the question was, as a gamer, my level of support for gaming-related charity efforts such as Able Gamers and Extra Life is high, moderate, or low? I don't know if you're doing one, two, three, or ABC, but there are only three choices. ABC. I kept it simple this week. And I, ke high, I kept it very... moderate, and low. <laughs> yes. <Those are> your <laughs> it's very simple. So I would like with Vanna if I had like the graphic here. Okay, go on. All right. So um, those of you who are on chat, give us just the A, B, or C, the, the letter that corresponds to the answer that you, that you would like to say. Um, while we are collecting those, um, those answers to that and, and tabulating the results, uh, let's go ahead and go around the circle um, to, um, just to see what we would say. I will start with myself. And what we'll do is we'll go clockwise. So after me, it'll be Magic, Redna, and then Elise in that order. So um, the reason I'm going first is because I kind of want to throw myself out there as a bad example. <laughs> I, I would, uh, well, it's bad example and it's a good example, right? I voted B on this poll. I am a medium. Now, I say that as a person that has been sucked into Extra Life all of these years, that has, that has put together my, my kind of, uh, I put together one of the hours, designed an event, enlisted people. I, I've been active in this thing. But uh, um, I guess the flair for it isn't probably what it, what it ought to be. Can I confess that? Um, part of me kind of wants to confess that it should be more. Um, and I'm struggling with that. say no, will you not confess it? <laughs> Yeah, I'm struggling with with quite how to answer this this thing because, and I'm noticing that. Well, we'll talk about we'll talk about some of the, the answers that people are having in chat here in a moment. But I think some people may agree with me, maybe in my same camp. But we'll unpack that. Magic, what about you? I would say moderate, and it's not because I do any events for Extra Life because I only started streaming last year, right before we started this, and 
even now I don't have a large audience. I'm not a very consistent streamer because of my kids. I can't like have a set schedule and like this one all up in my lap all the time. So it's not like I have a big audience to be able to do anything really with Extra Life, but I do help out with my fellow streamers that are doing stuff. And like last year I was participating in like even one of some of the games and competition things that we did. And I was like retweeting things on Twitter, putting things on Facebook, and I was trying to get the word out. And also charities in my own area because um, like St. Jude's, mm -hmm. we have um, and like Barnes Jewish, like we have different hospitals in St. Louis that do a lot of um, charity things. And so in my area, I participate in a lot of that stuff. So I say moderate because like a couple of times a year, I do stuff for different hospitals and stuff in my area, but it's extra life in itself. I'm just helping those who are already doing stuff. I'm not actually doing it myself. Okay. So moderate. Right. Okay. Brenda, what about you? Um, yeah, I actually, I, I might be the only person. Oh yeah. Yeah. I think I'm the only one that put an A. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, it's high for me now. Granted, I will say that it's, it wasn't originally that way. Um, hmm. I guess I, I have to make it personal, which you guys know, I tend to try to avoid, but uh, when I really started getting into gaming generally, when I started uh, getting into podcasting, even when I started streaming, um, all of these things that have uh, created uh, my, frankly, my existing online social media presence is a result of, of my, my gaming and um, my passion therein. Um, and, and by extension, um, it's actually ended up being um, something that I am proud to at least have what followers I do and what people uh, that care that I do um, because I very much enjoy every year being able to drive that into um, this this sort of thing. Um, now, originally when I first... Oh, I guess, and the reason being is when, when I first started all of this, um, <laughs> I wasn't married. I didn't have kids. I, my personal life was fairly solitary. I was barely making over minimum wage and quite frankly, didn't care much about my own self, but getting into extra life and this charitable organization, um, gave me something to really actually focus on. Uh, like the first couple years that I, uh, raised money. Um, I was actually making, I was raising more in a month than I was making in a month. Hmm. which felt pretty good, you know? Um, That's quite amazing. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. and, and it actually, so for, for a period of time in my life, it actually made, you know, like the Extra Life Month in November was kind of like um, more important than my job, <laughs> you know? Uh, and, I, I, and I enjoyed that. It felt like I was actually doing something that was meaningful, that was helping other people because I, you know, again, I was in, I was in a low spot myself, um, but, but, that, that kind of support has also not always been, I think some people maybe are a bit, and maybe even yourself, Sakari, a bit too critical um, because that kind of support, and I know we've got it in the notes, will become, you'll, you'll see there are many things that you can do. You don't have to be a live streamer. You don't even have to be a person actually raising money yourself. You don't have to donate. I couldn't donate. I was trying my best just to, to get other people to donate so that I, you know, because I had no money. Um, but uh, being able to promote others, support others, you know, even just on social media, you got a hundred people that uh, follow you and you can say, Hey guys, here's a good cause, uh, you know, retweet or donate uh, please and help spread the word. Um, there, there are a lot of things that we can do as gamers um, that can help, you know? Totally. Um, yeah. So, so for me, it's actually over five years now, I would actually say hi not because I've always been able to donate myself, not because I've even been able to stream successfully myself or even raise successfully myself, but because it has actually been incredibly important to me and I've at least tried to do what I could. Right. I also want to say out of all of the out of all of the people that have participated in our extra life team, you're usually the one that sets the most ridiculous goal. <laughs> it's like way up there yeah. compared to the rest. It's like I will raise five thousand dollars. There's so it's like three <laughs> hundred. <laughs> <laughs> because so. the, fir the first year the recommended uh, donation i think was like a hundred and the first year i like got like three or four hundred i was like oh well then i'll double that next year and i'll double that next year 
then I'll double that. And so <laughs> the number got big pretty quick. <laughs> It's like you're you're you know this is exponential, right? <laughs> it's going to it's going to end up some interesting places. So yeah, um, at least what about it has you? gotten big enough now that I don't actually get my goal anymore. <laughs> well, hey, at least you keep shooting for it. Um, I would say I'm fairly high. I um, do quite a bit with just about all of the ones except for one that you have in the graphic of the notes, at least. Um, so, um, I either donate or, um, you know, bump or retweet or watch or, um, do something with, um, all of them. Some of it is because I, um, are, am in multiple game communities, not just Star Wars, the Old Republic. And so therefore each one is kind of different, mm -hmm. but, um, I, uh, one of the able gamer uh, 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 like team members lives in my town, so like um, I see them all the time at, at like cons around locally and um, at PAX. So um, that's just kind of another one that I just um, associated with, sort of. So um, I really think that uh, video games can be a very good vehicle for doing good things. Um, contrary to sometimes what non-game playing people might have of us. So I really like, um, I really like uh, amplifying that as much as I can. Absolutely. Yeah, no kidding. Yeah. Um, somewhere in the, in the notes, I, I know I listed in here somewhere, is, is that we did an episode previously. And this is the one that um, Dr. Swotor was in. But I have to find it here. Um, where we had spoken about <clears throat> how gamers tend to have our... Episode 42, Stereotypes in Gaming. Thank you. Yes. I know I put it in there somewhere, but the show notes tend to move around <laughs> while we have this discussion. But um, um, like we, we had him on just to talk about the stereotypes that people have of gamers and that gamers have of other people and, and the interplay and all of those kinds of things. One of the things that I like is that this shifts some of the unfair stereotypes that exist out there. Oh, gamers are just in their mother's basement, just, you know, consuming, you know, hot pockets and beer and, and the game and <laughs> not having anything to do with anyone else kind of a thing. But I mean, here we are giving back, and that I sounds like. Sounds so yeah. horrifying. Seconds <laughs> of beer. I'm sorry, I'm hung up on that. I, hey, really quick though, before you move on, I just want to say that at PAX, the vending machines were just full of various kinds of Mountain Dew. I, <laughs> Mountain I found Dew. that very hot pockets of Mountain Dew. Like, <laughs> there wasn't any hot pockets, but there was every flavor of Mountain For Dew. Real? Almost nothing else. And that I, makes sense. There How much? How many and Mountain you... Dews I had to drink to get codes for the double XP for like <laughs> Halo and stuff. Oh my God. <laughs> oh, it was ridiculous. They got how you. Much there's Mountain sometimes Dew. someone's like, you want Mountain much. Dew? There, I, I there was a time where I actually Mountain tweeted Dew. a picture. This was, you know, again, uh, when I was in college and <laughs> a little bit down, but it was absolutely a picture of my refrigerator, door wide open, and every shelf completely full front to back of Monster. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Yeah, this I can might see that. explain also why I was averaging two to three hours sleep a night. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh my goodness. So yes. Um, okay. So let us. So we've all spoken about how we would answer the poll. How about we see what everybody said? So let me get the results. Get those sent to chat. Assuming I've done this. Right. And if you haven't, then we're in trouble. Lady Danny may need to help me. But okay, um, Elise. While we're talking, while we're waiting for that to get fixed, uh, would you uh, like to go into our? Uh... So, of uh, the official poll, we had twenty-four votes, and the number one answer was moderate with ten votes or forty-two percent. Low was second with eight votes or thirty-three percent, and high was six votes or twenty-five percent of the vote. All I'm going to say is that. Twice as many people voted moderate or high as did for low. <laughs> no, that's true. That that's fair. Absolutely. I want to say that it looks like the majority of people in chat said about moderate as well. Redna, of course, was a resounding A, a resounding resounding high. Yeah, I think there was one A, one C. Um, I and mean, everyone else was you know, in the middle. Two C, three Cs. 
uh, with a question post such as no, it is, too. it makes one wonder if it's a lot easier to say moderate just because you don't. It's like this kind of question when you discuss, you know, even charitable giving generally. A lot of people generally just feel bad about themselves because they never do as much as they feel they could right. or they should. Absolutely. You know, I'm, like there's there's a certain degree of self uh, guilt, humility, <laughs> or or even humility. Self loathing. Yeah, like they don't, <laughs> don't want to put high because they don't want to make it seem like they're better than you know holier than thou either. Yeah. Um, you know, which is why I hope that at least the way that I phrased my high is it's not so much that I think that I'm better than anybody. It's only because it has become very important to me sure. and I do what I can. No, you're you know? passionate about it. And that's something I admire. That's what I'm saying is like, I wish I had your like, let's get this done. Let's do this. I'm on it. Let's I, I, I feel cooler about it than that. And uh, and you have you radiate this this. This is important to me. I love this. Let's make this happen. And I want that is what I'm saying. Does it, yeah. it sound and, obsessive and, of me? Sorry. And, and, no, I'm just sitting here and thinking, you know, on the flip side, like I, I'm already feeling guilty even myself because I am the guy in our community that has traditionally actually done the 24-hour stream, right? Like right. Our, uh, <laughs> our, our group has had organized events for 12 hours. So, And I've usually done like a few hours before and a few hours after. Um, and and uh, I think Volk has done a full 24 um, but not always. Uh, and I think there's actually a good number of people that are a little bit more sane um, and, and don't do 24 hours. And let's, we, sh we Listen, should even. If I didn't have kids, I would be doing that stuff 24 hours. But let's be realistic. I don't have that kind of time. I can't even <laughs> sit down for an hour to do this show without my kids being all over me. So there's also like something you said, hours. like, you should be very careful about even participation in this sort of event because. There has been, and I should get the link and maybe we'll give it to our patrons, but there was actually a gamer uh, a year or two ago who was doing a 24-hour live stream, and it, it turned out he had, like, a, a heart uh, problem, mm. and he was, like, pumping himself with too much energy drinks and everything, and, <clears throat> wow. I, and I think he was, like, going out and smoking, and he might have even been drinking during the 24-hour period, but basically the guy ended up dying. It was really, really, really tragic. Um, so you do need to care for yourself in these circumstances. And I have been really bad and negligent in those sorts of situations myself, even. Um, uh, but so this year, I'm already feeling guilty because I'm planning on only doing 12 hours. You know, I'm actually going to do half. Well, Not part of that hey, because well, my wife said, hey, sweetheart, I need you to stick around for this brand new baby we have. <laughs> we, we, and I pretty much will never reject um, caring for my child. <laughs> All of us warned Redna. We said your life is going to slow down when you have kids, man. Like and it, it's true like you suddenly you can't you can't be as risky. I mean, I used to do road trips and such and those kids yep. slowed way down. When I had kids. Redna had this certain idea of things, and all three of us would laugh at him, and we're like, you'll see. You'll see. Now he's a parent. He's like, oh, I'm so tired. Now he's oh, in the club. We're, we're uh, like, now yeah, we know, bro. Soon, and I still haven't gotten a full night's sleep. <laughs> yeah, and then just wait when you get family aggro about, like, time that you're spending. That 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 will soon come. Yeah. from your like, kids why are you on there again <laughs> we've only been on here 45 minutes we're waiting on you it's been forever <laughs> well okay so let me speak here to to the idea of not being able to stream the whole 24 hours dude i can only stream maybe three hours at a time and then my butt gets sore <laughs> so i've got to get up and i've got to take a good break and then so so the you way that standing oh, yes, actually, I a probably, standing yeah desk. that's, that's a, a good really good idea a good community will actually help you with that so because I have had years where I was really having trouble and like on the hour, my chat room would just explode. Get up, move, go refill your water. You know, like that sounds like something they, Ken Dracos would say. Like he's told me, hey, save your game. He, okay. he helps the me. Best. Yeah, no Absolutely. Kidding. And especially when you start to drag or they start talking to you more. They actually start rather than talking to one another, they start engaging you more. Right. Yeah, Direct, stay awake. Just yeah. You, you're, me you're mentally active because I mean outside of extra life thank goodness I made the 24 but outside of extra life there have been streams where I streamed so long and I fell asleep on camera in my chair and and like people like to make the video clips of you snoring on camera That's you know? it's like dude I saw it I know this is a total sidebar but I saw a guy fall asleep on day three in Zelda the Wind Waker one the you know the one where you go around three days in time it was the one I think it's the Wind Waker oh right? yeah he fell asleep minutes before the world ended and slept through the end of the world. It was the most oh, epic thing no. I've ever seen. Horrible. Anyway, total sidebar. Okay. Total sidebar. I'm so sorry for derailing us, but yeah. Horrible. 
but no, I'm like, I mean, I, so the the way I have to do these these extra life events, I'm able to do three hours, and usually I can get the first three hours in the morning, and I really like doing that because that's when Volk is doing his interviews, and we've spoken about this before between us. I don't know if we've ever done this on chat. Volk is so like meticulous and careful, and he has his questions planned, and he he kind of starts it as an as an example. He's like, okay, Jesse explain to me what is this event about what are we doing how's the day going to unfold and and or he'll do it with Mox or somebody who's running the event and the, he gets all the answers right up front so that stuff makes sense so he's got the clip for his video everything and slackers like me are able to just be there and let him do all the work for us so we've you know and he now is, that he's blown he, up, <laughs> so he's not doing it this year <laughs> he's 100 percent an outline planner no question yes <laughs> i mean and, and he's been fantastic to have along the ride because he's someone that can make it more official and does a good job with it and, and volk has been fantastic to have at all of these uh, the extra laughs that we've done so far but as for me i can only get three hours into the thing and then I'm, I've got to be gone for like a couple hours or something. So I usually pick, I'm going to be here for, for these segments of the thing. I'm going to take this time off. I come back, I do another three hours. And then at that point, I'm like, okay, that's for the most part my day. But when you have this thing going on from like, it starts probably at like 10 in the morning or something and goes until, assuming Redna's doing the 24 hour thing, you can get coverage all the way until 10 the next, the next morning. I mean, it, it happens. So, so yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess it's one of those things, partly being parent, but partly also getting old. I don't know. Maybe some some explanation. Something about your butt. What? Yes. I also sit in a leather chair. So, <laughs> excuse me. No, there, there are actually things that I like. Even for my 12 hours this year that I've been thinking about is just... Uh, like, because uh, uh, a lot of times, like playing one game the entire time, especially when there isn't new content, like an expansion hasn't just come out or whatever, right. can be actually a bit tiresome. One, I, the year of the, um, uh, I think I think it was a year with the DVL, I actually was able to do Star Wars: The Old Republic the entire time because I was like in the crunch. It was like the last week or two before I had to like really, really finish. So you procrastinated until that time? <laughs> no, I actually was rebelling and refusing to participate for several months and then realized I still couldn't pass up on all those achievements that they took away from me later. <laughs> um, uh, that's what happens if you achieve a type. That's, that's right. hilarious. Us, us ones are like, I was like, Psh, I don't care. <laughs> Oh, but I this, have to miss on stuff? I don't care. Just give me my one thing. And I've done I had different... it done like three weeks before the event was over. I had everything done. <laughs> I've done different uh, strategies, you know, like where you just, okay, I'm going to be doing Star Wars games, but I'm going to keep changing every hour just to keep it, you know, real, fresh, moving or whatever. Like this year, what I'm actually considering since I've actually started doing like live stream readings and I've previously done live stream cooking for some of my breaks where I have to get up and go and do something. I actually think I'll shift to the camera and do um, whatever it is that I'm actually cooking in the kitchen and, and preparing my food and then flip it back into the, um, uh, you know, to the video game or whatever. Uh, like there are different things that you can do for those kinds of strategies to care for your own mental sanity. Yeah, that is actually quite a, quite a good idea. Yeah, I do know. So uh, Kidley mentioned in chat, the guys versus gals, event that they did they were putting together the teams for that and somebody said hey sakari would you like to be on this <laughs> and i may not have answered <laughs> because what the idea was is i think it was four on four right kidley if if you are, are there and they had it was basically a leveling event and i think it was like a race to 70 or something yeah wasn't it like yeah. double xp or something like that at the time yeah yeah, it was a double XP thing, but it was a race to, to from from a brand new character to level seventy, and they all like fired off at the same time, and just booked it as fast as they could through all of the like power leveling, um, to do it, and and I think it was fourteen hours if if Kidley uh, mentioned it in chat. So that is that is intense. I mean, because yeah, I mean you're the, working for fourteen that was the hours. The pre one, if I remember correctly, that was the spring, like prelude one for extra life. So we yes. would do. Unholy Alliance would do two. No double XP. Spring he says. and then it was spring and then one and then the main one in the fall. And this year, however, we are not doing it that way. I'll just say that. Right. In case waiting. <laughs> yeah. So so yeah. we're taking we're taking sanity into account this year and are, are doing like an eight hour event. I want to say November the third is when this is happening. By the way, mark your calendars. Those of you who are interested. Um, there's a hundred different ways to participate. One of the things that you can do is just watch a streamer. Um, definitely, if you can, the whole point behind this thing is to see if we can raise some cash, 
raise some money for the Children's Miracle uh, Network of Hospitals. So we, we and we'll we'll share the link a little later. But we are going to um, any anything that we can drum up. If you can share it, that's one way you can participate. Help us get word out there. Like like um, share it with also, your sure on your own social media. Go ahead. Or also just playing the game. We do mm -hmm. a lot of events to kind of make it entertaining for the people who are streaming it. And we usually yeah. always need people to just play. So even if you can't do anything, but Which play the game with us. Yes. Totally. That is also good because those of us who work to create events for those eight hours really don't like us just standing there looking around. Yes. <laughs> and it's just us. I won so. the Swotor Squares. It was really great. I got a shopping spree from uh, Swotorisa. Uh, Swotorisa. Yeah. That was funny. And then Musco threatened to delete my account if I didn't pick him. And I was like, <laughs> yes. duress. I'm under duress. So it's actually so, pretty funny. If you've ever seen Hollywood Squares, uh, it, it, um, it was basically the, the same idea. But they made the, the, the um, crisscross of all of the different faces that are usually there um, with influencers. And Eric Musco was there. And I think Will and Marshall were there. Rena, were you a block in, in that thing? I want to yeah, say I you was. were. Yeah, you I won. I might not have won the game, but I totally won the banter between Musco and I. Really? Just saying. We've got video footage, and I was very funny. So the, the whole <laughs> idea is to try to say something <laughs> hilarious. I was very funny. But um, um, yeah, it was. Yeah, it was I actually, I got, I was able to get Musco to laugh. So for me, that was just a moral victory. <laughs> a moral victory. <laughs> yeah. So okay, we, well, we know how low red is bar is set. Anyway, <laughs> every every year we do some kind of a Musco event. So so we everybody thinks of a way, and and they've done Muscos in space. I think that was a GSF uh, event. They've done Musco leveling events. I think there's been like like uh, scavenger hunts, whatever else. At yeah, least. that was can last I, year. Can I just say though, the Musco in space, Muscos in space, to me was the absolute best one. I don't like GSF. But that was freaking hysterical to watch people just blow up and come back out <laughs> with their Musco right. character. I, I just, I found that in the title, I thought was just awesome. So right. just, I want to give a shout out to that, even if we didn't like GSF and many people protested GSF prior to doing it. But they did it, it was, anyway. So, well, yeah. So, so I, I mean, I bet it's dumb, right? It's just like, hey, well, we'll everybody makes a character that looks like Eric Musco as, as closely as they can. And I mean, like, like pictures get posted to websites and it's like, here's what we're going for, guys. And everybody does their best. And I think what um, we were talking before the show, uh, one of the ones that was the best of all time was Blay, right? Blay, Blaylock? Blechlock? Is, uh, I don't know how to say his name, and he's probably going to chastise me for it, but Blay, we call him for short. Um, he did a character called All the Way Must Go one, one year, and he started Body Type 4, and as the day progressed, his his body types like went down to body type 1. <laughs> so I think that's hilarious. Like He had this like long-term vision for his character. Or I mean, it may have been during the event or something, but that I mean that was awesome. So people come up with some hilarious, hilarious Musco ideas. There's, there's that. Um, I actually, one of the, the ones that I did, and so, so I must confess that some time ago there was a speed racer event, and I might, I might have cheated. It, it, there's, there's some rumors that I might have cheated the event. So somehow, for all of these things, I got stuck with. Wait, wait, wait. Which one? Which one? Because there was one inside the Tatooine stronghold that I was a participant may, in. May, may have been that one. <laughs> That's people why I say, lost. People I say it. I cheated, but they cannot prove it. Okay, so so <laughs> there's a lot of video footage. If you can't prove it, then you didn't cheat. <laughs> well, somehow it got stuck on me from that point on. Hey, Sakari, you're the one in charge of the speed racer event. So, so last year I was like, okay, if I'm gonna be, do a speed racer event, we're gonna make this bloody. It's gonna be everyone's gonna cheat. It's gonna be all about cheating. So we did a the, we basically went to the Tatooine. Oh, what's the name of the place? The Outlaws Den. Where everybody is is aggro to everybody as long as you're in that place and we just did we did a speed racer around the inside of that um like event and then had certain ones of us dressed up as as tuscan raiders um shooting people off their speeders that was a blast i was one of the tuscan raiders i i didn't i did it was more fun to shoot people than it was to, <laughs> to race oh I goodness people who like totally came not a sadist at all that was that was a little bit of dark um, side going on there that was that was pretty funny. Yeah. So 
and like the rules were you can't kill anybody but i th- i think volk got killed and still came back and won mm-hmm. <laughs> i think is what happened Dang. so yeah he had to he had to like start like at the nearest the nearest res station and make his way all the way back he lost that all that time the only that was the only event last year that I couldn't attend because I was taking care of my kids and then Lot was able to like drop them off at my mom's and stuff. And then when I log back on, it was already done. And I'm like, dang it. By the way, I have to credit a Larry of hyperspace beacon. He's in chat. He was the one name, the one who came up with the name, the Fort Tuscan Grand Prix. So, oh, so that was so clever. Yeah. He so was the one who came was, up with that. Cool. It was a lot of fun doing that one. What other events have we had that we were just hanging around uh, doing that you can think of at least? It was, there was the contest one, the costume contest one, because my character Psylocke won. I yeah, was it's like the cosplay that. stuff. Yeah, the... you had to explain why your character looked the way they did. Was there any specific things that made it unique, and why was it unique? Like, you had to explain it. And I was able to post a picture of what my model tune was supposed to be like, and I explained, like, each detail of why I picked her class, why I picked her weapon, why her outfit was that way. I won. I was. Hey, but you put a ton of work into <laughs> that character. Like, I mean, it's been I a put, long time. I put uh, fourteen million and two thousand cartel coins into that character. Right, that's and no joke. And she's still my favorite character that I've made. She's pretty epic. So it was those worth are always it. hard to judge because yeah. there's always yeah. good ones. Last year we had like somebody uh, had a Mox Wonder Woman a, that was just it was yeah, fantastic. Yeah, somebody did that. Mox was John made a Jean Luc Picard. <laughs> yeah, that one was pretty she good. Made I made a Klingon, and she actually spoke some Klingon when she like introduced her. It was, uh, it just um, we had somebody as Deadpool. I, I just all that stuff is the cool. Joker and Harley. I think yeah. Zella was like an alien, like made, dressed up with that one like thing that's like that alien looking costume in Star Wars, and like then did the like possessed emote at the same time. I mean, it just. Those are so hard to judge, but I know Jess and I really enjoy the fashion shows and stuff because it's nice. people go all out, you know, that, that's what makes it really cool. Uh, Heck yeah. And what's funny years. is I made that character not knowing about that contest. So when I found out about the contest, I'm like, perfect, people could appreciate my effort. <laughs> For the first few years of the uh, Extra Life events, when we started doing it with uh, Unholy Alliance Wookie Mistake, is... Um, they, the the Musco events were actually the leveling events, mm-hmm. so everybody had to make a new character. Like a race and to 12 or like something. It. Right, race to 12, race to 20, whatever. Um, and I always really liked those, but then they told me I couldn't do it anymore because I won a few too many times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's awesome. See, maybe you I maybe you knew something Sakari-ish. Well, but the best titles. part was, the, the last time I actually did participate, I didn't win. I got second, and it was because... I part I, I grouped up because you get more it was after they did more experience when you're in a group than went outside of the group. And so I grouped up with somebody and we were crushing it just way ahead of everybody. And then my wife, well, my fiance at the time was like, Sweetheart, I really need you. I'm sorry, I don't want to interrupt your stream or whatever. And it was like, Okay, you know, real life comes first. So I got up and walked away and came back and he dinged before I got back. <laughs> oh no. Oh wow. But it was great because I'd left myself on follow. So he <laughs> was still getting the experience bonus. <laughs> it was really nice. We did the Cantina crawl event, right? Everybody just, it's basically bar hopping. That's kind of fun from Cantina again to Cantina. That's been fun with the radio free group. Um, mm-hmm. that, that, that kind of stuff. Yeah. I've all enjoyed yeah, joining up with them too. But then, that was my idea. The cool yeah, thing. Have a party at the end. I really wanted to do something slightly different. It was kind of cool for yeah. day two to bust out his super secret cantina. Yes. There's a super yeah, secret cantina pretty... that you can only access like within some, there's th- like, like, so somebody's storyline or something like that is the yeah. only way that you can go there and that was like the way that they kept it off i forget what it was yeah i did that um a few months ago and i looked around i'm like wait a second this is jt's cantina so i took a screenshot of it and posted it in chat i'm like jt i've been here before <laughs> yeah it is is you can only get to, well i mean anybody can get to it but you only know it's there if you've got a storyline otherwise literally you right. just have to randomly be walking around and be like oh what the heck is this hole in the stumble ice? across you'll find yeah. it yeah <laughs> Yeah, very cool. There's been uh, creature unlock events. Those are ones I have no idea, but there's like a lot of research that goes into it. By the way, I think one of the things that we should, one of the people we should shout the, out. The, the, let's not forget the pod racing with the freaking people dressing up as sand people in order to shoot them and stuff. Yeah, like, we talked awesome. about that. That was the Grand Prix. Yeah. Was the... yeah. Oh, that was a Grand Prix. Okay. Yeah. 
So I, I do want to shout out Mox. Moxus UA, I think, is, is what he goes by on Twitch here. Um, but he has been the coordinator the last few years running, doing this whole thing, getting all of the, I mean, chasing, basically herding cats, trying to get everything lined up. And then he emcees the entire day So and drives the whole thing. So he's been, he's taking a break this year and poor Jim has st- stepped up to fill his shoes. So I, I, we all know Jim is going to be great at it, but because like she's going to take no guff from us going to be great. She's got a lot of Elisa skill set, I just, I just want to say. <laughs> kind, of, kind of whipping yeah, people into shape. The way, she's, the way she says it, though, is gold. Because like if someone's doing something stupid, she's like, well, now? I don't <laughs> think that that's very good. And then everybody feels guilty. Yeah. She's basically saying, suck it up and you know move on or knock that crap off. But she won't say it that way. Right. Everyone knows what she means, but that's not how she says it. So it's, it's right. hilarious and effective. But yeah, she's running it this year, so um, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a different a different pace, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what, what we're gonna expect. But she's been already hard at work trying to get things uh, together. So it's amazing. I, I think the time that goes into getting something like this together, like just the sheer people are working on things. People are like you. It's not enough just to come up with an idea. Hey, I want to do this. You've got to go test it. You've got to go see if it works. You've got to go. There may be research. Okay. I mean, like this stuff Mox has done where it's like, okay, we're going to do within X amount of minutes, we're going to kill every um, champion boss on Corellia to get such and such a title. Well, that's that's in order to like yeah. we did in order boss, to do that. All right, we put like a boss. He's got well, ten characters that, set up. T- yeah, he's got all of his characters scattered throughout the galaxy, ready so that every time everybody needs to move, he switches and does guild summons. Yeah, just for the move entire people. operations group. Which, by the way, your operations group can be up to twenty four people, even though the biggest actual operation is only sixteen. Um, <laughs> Absolutely, and then he's like. But for uh, world boss purposes, they need it, that. It's awesome. His his organizational skills are just over the top of me. Or boss. even for the pet unlocks, you have to go farm a so for like the, like tauntauns. the little tauntauns. You have to go farm yeah. the eggs, and then you have to get the little, the little, what is that, the little shot things, and then something else to be able to actually do it. And we would farm those. And some of those are actually uh, uh, much crafted items so he would actually before the day of have all the crafted items available for anybody that wanted to participate right so he had dozens of them on hand you know i'm so glad we have people like mox because there's no way i would put that much <laughs> right it. no it be way. Near as cool. Dude, it's hard enough for me to turn on my stuff, camera <laughs> or stuff gets on my nerves so fast i'm like i'm done i'm no i put in effort now it's tedious i'm done but magic you helped with what was it last year that we did the um the datacron on I know, but the that's fleet. Different. We had to put, we had to get at certain levels. That took yeah, us like four pre, hours. It, to preposition get people, but, yeah, absolutely. And but the reason, to be the able reason, to summon people and pull people. The reason why I was able to do that effectively is because a, I've been an officer in other guilds, yeah, and I, that's an old hat. I've done that multiple times for like guild recruiting drives and whatnot. Um, and b, because. I had Netflix on, watching it on one screen while I was waiting. <laughs> hey, whatever you got to do to make it less painless, yeah, painful. So that four I'm hours kidding. wasn't as painful for me. Everyone else was like, "Oh, here we go again." I'm like, "Oh, new episode." <laughs> Indeed. So it wasn't that bad. It really wasn't. But uh, personally, I I like that stuff. I like to be involved. I just don't want the tedious stuff. So thank you to people like Mox. Yes, indeed. <laughs> By the way, Jem has joined us in chat. She's Texas Gemini. In case anybody's wondering. So welcome to you, Jim, Jim, tonight. We were just talking about you and letting everybody know. I was going to say, you're, no, yours, Bernie? Yeah, they, <laughs> you're the no, one. She actually said that she has been chatting with us this whole time, but she'd been hosting and chatting from her own chat room. Oh. So we didn't get to see any of it. Okay. <laughs> but, I mean, and, and uh, to, to the point, actually, one of the things... Jim is one that I actually wanted to mention because we wanted to discuss, like, what you can do to be a participant she is one of those people that I value the most. She is actively seeking out every single one of mm-hmm. us that is trying to at least do something to help stream in any way or whatever. She's promoting. She's helping. And those are the kinds of people that I think are the unsung heroes. They are doing, like Magic Ace was saying, like the stuff that I don't want. I don't, I don't have the patience or the planning skills to promote, market, get ready, whatever. <laughs> right. And, yeah. She's the one that's out there, like, even when I'm not even tweeting about the fact that I'm even involved, 
and tagging me and putting my name in there so that I oh yeah that's right I should be saying something and so that I can you know quote retweet or do whatever and help. Basically, she's saying, Redna, you're slacking. Knock it off. But she's saying it nicely. <laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. She <laughs> says these things, head. but not <laughs> saying it like that. Right. We, we know, Jim. We got you. Um, yeah, I'd like to, before we wrap up, since we're at almost at time, um, we've been talking a lot about Extra Life, but just again, I'd just like to shout out that Extra Life is awesome, but it's not the only one. And it's actually not the only one who... Um, supports children's child play, I believe, um, is mm-hmm. with St. Jude's. Um, so that's another charity organization. Um, Able Gamers. Um, we actually know and love some folks that are uh, being helped and also uh, work with Able Gamers. Um, Ooh, can and we... They help people with, with the, uh, who have challenges of being able to play games. Right. We should shout they... out JT right now. JT's new that. channel is All Access here on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash All Access. I'm amazed that he got that, but hey, let's go with it. Oh, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, right? <laughs> but, um, but his whole idea is kind of that Able Gamers angle on things. It's, it's you know, physical challenges in gaming and, and helping people to overcome that. So that's, he's, he's kind of, he was the, the BB underscore network, you know, Blaster, I forget, I'm going to get it wrong, but BB underscore network. He's changed it now to, to, to that kind of angle. So I think that's great. I mean, he's Blaster he's made it a year. A, okay, thank you. Well, Thanks, Magic. I think as a group, yeah. the Able Gamers group is, is a more recent one, only a year or two that they've been organized. But they've actually really uh, stepped up and, and done uh, an amazing job because, to, to be frank, actually, there were a number of, people that I've interacted with and engaged helped to even set up streams or or helped to try and promote them just because they'd reached out to me and we'd had conversations or whatever and I was completely oblivious of their actual physical circumstances and and you know as a result discovered much 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 later that oh it turns out they actually are dealing with a disadvantage um physically and the fact sure. that you know and then I, it turns out, oh, I actually just like these people as individuals, and they deserve because they're positive. They they contribute. They're absolutely. They're, they're creating. They're you know, mm-hmm. and and so I've always helped to promote them. And it turns out, oh, and uh, I like that the Able Gamers group exists. Um, They've they, been it, around for a little bit. I know. Um, a piece, uh, Pashley Casual, I believe, did a interview with them. Like when I first started playing, which I've been playing now for what almost that four years now. now? Yeah, that was before um, I, yeah, I don't. I, I in don't here. think correct. Yeah. So I don't think it's, but I don't think they were very big. Like they are now at PAX and mm-hmm. like get and they're getting more. That must they, be it then. Just they the last worked year with they worked with Microsoft. Back. Microsoft yeah. reached out to them to help make the adaptive controller. So right. I, I think they're getting amplified more here of late. Yeah. So, but they've been around for a bit. Elise, so. um, sorry, I interrupted you when you were listing different ones. I do want you to finish that. So, I mean, besides, we, we were on Able Gamers. What other uh, um, charities are there that are useful in this, this kind um, of thing? So we said, I said Able Gamers, Extra Life, Child's Play. Child's Play is actually, um, was started, it's by the PAX group. So the Penny Arcade folks who do PAX um, started Child's Play. I thought that was Chucky. Mm-hmm. Is no. that some horror film series or something? No. Oh, are you talking about the the? It might be, but that's actually the charity. Child's Play, the, the, like a movie. <laughs> yeah, I feel like that, it is. I think isn't it? A, there is a movie. I think has something to do with that. Okay, okay. Um, this is a much better. Now right? you won't it's forget better. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, and the Destiny uh, Community Convention. Uh, I think they call it Destiny Community Con. Whatever. Um, they do a huge, like, I think it's like two or three days bro- uh, before the g- community convention kicks off where they stream and they ro- they raise like a million plus dollars mm. every year prior to for St. Jude's. Um, so it's the, you know, it's a different game community, but it's still huge. And that's an amazing amount of money for people who stream and Absolutely. play games yeah. prior to for a very large um, free hospital children's hospital so um, and then uh, uh, I, I'm not sure who put it up but the charity streams that we've done here and there for specific like um, 
like acute issues. Like, like hurricane relief really for some of the tragedies that have happened in the United States, or actually even in, uh, I, I ended up putting that in there just because I remember it's something worth. Shut up, phone. Uh, <laughs> it's like you're gonna sorry, you're about to get murdered or something. It's a lightsaber sound. <laughs> sound so, <laughs> um, but uh, it's something that I've been noticing he more was getting recently. Excited about uh, that and it's not even just a local to the United States sort of thing, which is why it's worth mentioning. But it's one of the few things that I actually am really still very pleased with and motivated by regarding um, social media generally is the fact that when uh, when there are circumstances that people are suffering um, within the gaming community, I've noticed more and more recently that there are people, groups of people that band together and they'll they'll put a hashtag on their Twitch stream title or even, you know, whenever they go live on, on Twitter or, or whatever. Um, because they are actually trying to raise money for organizations uh, to help those local areas. Um, and, you know, it's it's great that we have various different opportunities to plan for something once a year. But also, it's really nice that if you can, you are able to actually try and do something for people in the moment of need as well. Agreed. We so. also have ones for, like... Um, yeah, we had suicide awareness. I know there were several streamers that did streams supporting that. Um, I, and it's nice too, that we're getting some, there's a little kind of feedback that happens too with the game developers. I know this month I think is cancer awareness month. I think in September and Warframe actually made a special like attachment that you can put on your Warframes, um, for an awareness. It's a ribbon. That is um, really cool. And yeah. um, I Overwatch had the Mercy skin. That was the pink Mercy skin for breast October. cancer awareness. Yes. Yeah. But I think yeah, it came out earlier in the year. Um, it didn't actually come out during the breast cancer awareness month. But yes, it, all the proceeds from buying that skin went to the research. Right. Which is great. Yeah. So, and I, I think and that's I the think flip that's side too. Like people get so pissed feedback. off about microtransactions and everything, but at the same time, microtransactions can actually drive this kind of very positive change and support as well where hey all i did was take a skin and put a you know pink ribbon on it but all of this money is actually going towards something that is genuinely valuable and i know that blizzard yeah because yeah. i would pay for stuff, that skin i want all of mercy skins all of them <laughs> but if yeah. blizzard and world of warcraft and their various I'm games they've saying. done those kinds of skins <laughs> or like in, in they could do a flare in swotor for instance you know just hey here's a flare for this and just sell flares for that you know and so i mean there's a lot there's a ways that we could do it as well um, all right, so we need to wrap it up. We are at time. I just want to make sure that everybody understands. 5.9.3, real quick on the, on the announcements, is on the public test server. So it's called Fame and Fortune, apparently. There is a new Hutball war zone they're testing out. The Sky Shredder. It's on a flying barge over the gas planet of Vanden. So, oh, G Dubs TFML, I'm so excited <laughs> for this. It's gonna be. I think it's gonna be great. I, I love football, so we, we'll see what happens. But anyway, PTS, it's out there. They've done a couple uh, test runs of it. I haven't heard anything back yet, so stay stay tuned. We'll let you know. Um, also, want to make sure that everybody knows. The, the last week we had episode 53, and what we discussed was um, the the, the um, three way um, kind of social contract that happens between like um, streamers and companies that you know game production companies and then the community uh, that consumes all of this stuff and and the partnership that they have so um, there was more that we wanted to unpack on that so we've decided to do a part two for that so stay tuned next week and we will do we'll uh, get back to that and uh shockingly the council was like far too self-focused <laughs> so, yes. we would like to expand that <laughs> so join us next week for a revisit of that and, and a new uh, direction on that as well and that's all i have for uh for announcements it's called week. part two it's fine just say it <laughs> okay part two how about that over to you and, magic uh, i think uh, it's uh, season uh, one right. episode two <sighs> We would like to say thank you to everybody who showed up for our episode today, who participated in our straw poll, who also may or may not have talked or lurked or shared or retweeted or anything at all. Um, wait, did someone say I didn't have sound? No, you. Yeah, we hear you. Okay, I thought I didn't have sound. <laughs> Anyways, 
Also, thank you for everybody who downloads our podcast. We appreciate it. It's super epic. And since we're not posting on Reddit here recently, I guess I won't be talking to the Reddit haters, but we love you anyways. We appreciate you. Thank you. Um, also, we would like to say thank you so much to our Patreon, our patrons, or I've been criticized, okay? I hear half of the people say Patreon. I hear the other half say patrons. I'm going to say this. Patrons. Patrons. <laughs> <laughs> that too. <laughs> Okay. Let that stick. Who anyway, said it? Who said it? I will Thank beat you that. all. <laughs> we appreciate it. You're awesome. And thank you for loving this game so that we can love it too. Agreed. And that brings us to the end of the episode. The council is adjourned. If you'd like to reach us, you can email us at the council at the council Like our Facebook page at facebook.com slash the council You can find Elise on Twitter at a brown 35 magic ace at the magic ace. It's been a while, but I would like to remind you that it is spelled with a J and a K. And we're not just kidding. <laughs> Me at R3DN4 and Sakari at I am Sakari. Also, don't forget our Patreon page at patreon.com slash council smoke where patrons can catch the articles we're talking about behind the scenes and exclusive backstage access to our after show chat. That's it for this week, guys. Size matters not. Look at me. Judge me by my size, do you? And well, you should not, for my ally is the force, and a powerful ally it is. I understand. You are on this council, but we do not grant you the rank of master. What? How can you do this? This is outrageous. It's unfair. How can you be on the council and not be a master? Take a seat, young Skywalker. Forgive me, master.